This new camera boom has so much reach, it can get to every corner of the workshop. It's way longer than that camera jig that was doing the rounds of YouTube a little while ago. <laughs> it's so tiny. And I know that secretly, everyone wants more length. My old camera boom served me well for many years, but it had a few issues and frustrations, particularly with binding up and having to tighten and loosen the joints too often. So I wanted to make a smoother operating version based on this examination light I have. Now, before you start speculating, it's because I'm getting old and my eyesight is crap. This thing is awesome for getting out splinters. I started with the arm struts first, which I ripped from these boards of old reclaimed hardwood. I think it may be oak, but it was very strong and sturdy, so it was perfect because I wanted the struts to be as slim line as possible. I needed six, and they ended up at roughly 20 mil square. Their length is around 600 mil long, but that wasn't critical. I just made sure I had matching pairs. I then drilled an 8 mil or 5 16 hole in each end for bolts to go through. I later found out that these holes were too close to the end because that very small piece of timber that was left between the hole and the end of the strut broke out on a couple of them. So I ended up cutting the struts a little shorter to remove the initial holes and re-drilled them further back from the end. This was a perfect opportunity to use my homemade belt sander. I love this thing. I'll put a link to that build video in the description below. I then moved on to the side plates that join the arms together and I just measured the ones on the lamp and scaled it up by two and ended up with these dimensions for the placement of the holes. Before making the final side plates, I made a couple of test pieces out of MDF just to confirm if the hole spacings would work. The two closer holes were 30mm apart and then using a compass set at 60mm, I could draw two arcs to get that measurement right and then could measure out the other two holes on those arcs at 84mm apart. After drilling out the holes, I refined the shape of the side plates to look a bit better and more finished. I was pretty confident that these would work, so I took the time to cut and sand them to shape because these would be used as templates for the final pieces. This is my homemade disc sander. I'll leave a link to that build video below as well. And here's all the pieces so far. To mock up the side plates and the struts for a test run, I just used 8mm dowels in place of bolts. seems to be working just fine. So I set up a dummy run on the workbench and it's all good. Works like a charm. With everything working well, it was time to make the final side plates out of solid timber. Same process as before, cutting them out with a bandsaw and then sanding to final shape. It was important that the holes and the side plates lined up exactly, so I drilled pilot holes in one of the pieces and then used that same piece to transfer the hole locations to the other three. I then drilled all the holes out with an 8mm drill bit or you could use 5 sixteenths depending on what size bolt to use. Assembly was fairly straightforward. I used cuphead bolts and seated them into one of the side plates. Then the struts were put in place and the second side plate was fitted and secured with nuts. 
At this point, the nuts are not overly tightened. They'll get adjusted later. The lamp mechanism had these springs attached to help counteract the force of gravity, so I thought I'd add the same to the camera boom. I used some quarter inch screws through one end of the spring with a nut and washer placed up near the head and then fixed those screws through the strut arms with another nut and washer. To attach the other end of the spring to the pivot bolts, I drilled a small hole in a mudguard washer and placed that over the end of the bolt. I then used another nut to keep them in place. Those nuts were left loose so the washer could rotate with the arm movement. I attached the top of the camera boom to the existing pivot point on the beam trolley with a couple of bolts and spacer blocks. I also capped off the end of the boom with these two side plates that just pivot on some dowels and this simple mount for the camera ball head. This mount only needs to be simple because the ball head gives me all the motion and rotation I need. Last thing to do to finish off the boom was to trim off all the bolts. At full length the boom can hold up its own weight including my phone and can reach every corner of the workshop. And when I'm finished with it, or I don't need to use it, it just gets packed away and pushed off to the side. 